Alrighty guys, this is page two of your test review for 4.4 to 4.7. This video will cover number nine through 15. We're gonna continue with using successive differences to determine our polynomial regression equation. Take a look at your x value. This is your L1, this is your L2, this is your x, and this is your y, okay? All right, notice this is all increasing by one. So now, I'm going to use my successive differences to help me determine which regression I'm going to use. So I'm going to take negative 6 minus negative 12, which is basically plus. comes out to be 6. Take your second minus the first. 4 minus negative 6 is 10. 12 minus 4 is 8. 12 minus 12 is 0. Negative 12 minus 12 is negative 14. Negative 36 plus 2 is negative 34. Definitely not a linear. Okay, continue with your math. 10 minus 6 is 4. Hang on, just a moment. Let me take, get rid of this page. Oh, here we go. It'll be easier for me to write. 8 minus 10 is negative 2. 0 minus 8 is negative 8. Negative 14 minus 0 is negative 14. Negative 34 plus 14 is 20. Definitely not a quadratic. Okay, that's your second difference. Next one, negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. Negative 14 plus 8 is negative 6. I see a pattern emerging. I'll tell you about right here. What am I missing? Oh, that should be a negative. Okay. Negative 20 plus 14 is negative 6. Do you guys see that? That's where I messed up on my math. Negative 34 plus 14 is negative 20. So this now is a cubic. All right? So, um... I'm going to go stat, I'm going to edit, I'm going to delete L2 all at one time. So if you highlight it, now I'm going to enter my data. All my x value has already been entered from the previous problem, so here's L2, which is your x. Negative 12, negative 6, 4, 12, 12, negative 2, negative 36. For every x, you must have a y. Okay. Now before I plot, I want to point something out to you before I go do my regression. Okay. I'm going to clear this equation. Now hit graph. Kind of gives you an idea of what the graph looks like. It looks kind of cubic, but you're not seeing everything. If you hit zoom 9, do you guys kind of see the shape that might be part cubic? That's why it worked, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and continue with our equation. Alpha, trace, like we have done earlier. And here's your equation. y is equal to negative 1x to the third minus 4x squared plus 5x plus 12. Let me scoot that over. Okay. With an r value of 100%. And there is your equation. And it is in standard form, highest degree to the lowest number. 3, 2, understood 1, and a constant. All right, number 10 says, name each polynomial and state the end behavior of each function. This part, you will take first. This is no calculator. You have to know how to do this. All right? Okay, take a look. This is your highest one. This is the number we're going to look at. If you plot this graph, this is an even. It's going to go in the same direction. Okay? Either they're both going to be pointing up or they're both going to be pointing down. Notice this is negative. So when you are plotting this one, it's going to start quadrant 3 and end in quadrant 4. Same direction because they're even. Negative starts down here in the negative. Your graph will look something like this. I'm not trying to find out where you're crossing the x-axis. I don't need to know your y-intercept. I am looking to have an idea what your graph looks like regarding your end behavior. Okay? All right. Name each polynomial. The highest degree here is a 4, and a 4 is called a quartet. Make sure you know the name. In behavior, here is my left, and this is how you write it. As x is approaching negative infinity, notice it's going toward the negative infinity, it's heading west, it's also heading south. So your y is heading south. Okay? And a south is negative infinity. Let's look at your right-hand side. Here's your right-hand side. X is going this direction. As X is approaching positive infinity, 
ui is approaching negative infinity let me try to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can kind of see it okay there you go you see how this is west it's heading southwest as it's heading west it's heading south this one here is east as it's heading east it's heading south okay so make sure you are aware of that Let's see if i can try to focus and so i magnify a little bit more hang on just a moment sorry guys that's the best i can do okay no calculator number 11 okay plot your graph let's take a look highest degree right here is a 5. It's an odd, so it's going to go either start here, in here, start third quadrant, in in the first quadrant. Notice it's a positive. If it's a positive, it's going to start in the third quadrant, and it's going to end in the first quadrant, okay? And it's to the fifth, so you should have four loops. One, two, three, four, five. Your graph's going to look something along this line. Okay, we don't care about the thing in between, we're just looking where it ends. When it's a fifth root, this is called a quintic. Make sure you know that. All right, here's your left, here's your right. Left end behavior. As x is approaching negative infinity, right end behavior. Do you notice you always write these two? Okay? All right, now let's take a look. As x is heading west, it's also heading south. So y is approaching negative infinity. Look at your right. As x is hedging, uh, approaching east, it's heading north. And north is positive infinity. Okay? All right. Number 12, you have a cubic. I apologize that this is not very clear. I don't know how to make it any clearer. See if I can make it clear. Number 12. Let's take a look. This is a cubic. Why? Because your highest degree is a 3. Okay? Cubic. Your graph will look something like this. Negative starts up here, ends in the fourth quadrant. So it will look something like this. All right. Your left, your right. Your left. As x is going toward the negative infinity, your y is going north. You're right. As x is approaching east, it is approaching south. So you mentioned the east and the west first. That might help you as far as writing it. Okay? So positives and negatives. Number 13. Highest degree is this one right here. Highest degree is a 2. That is a quadrat. All right, so let's make a sketch of the graph. What's it going to look like? Well, it's positive. It's an even number. It's going to start here. It's going to end the same place. Sketch of the graph, okay? Here's your left. Here's your right. Your left. X is approaching west as it's heading toward the negative infinity. It's going up north, which is positive, right? As x is approaching east, it is also going north, which is positive. So if you can just get used to that language, it might help you. Just know that this is negative infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity, positive infinity. Okay? Number 15, we're going to identify all characteristics for the function below. Use any calculators to find any unknown values to look. Three decimal places. So don't miss that, okay? All right, first of all, let's name this. What is your highest degree here? It's a five. If it's a five, it is a quintic, okay? Try to do everything that you know without using a calculator first. Next, your domain. Far left to far right. How far left did this go? It started over here and it continued over here. Notice the arrow? So your domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Here's negative, here's positive. Here's negative, here's positive. Just because your graph stops at 8 doesn't mean it ends at 8. This graph continues forever. A plane goes on and on and on. Your range. How low did you start? Well, I started down here. 
How high did this graph go? Way up there. So your range goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay? Hold on just a moment. Let me make this a little smaller so you can see the whole thing. All right. In behavior, I'm looking at this part right here. This here is heading southwest. Okay? So, as x is approaching negative infinity, it is also heading south. That's your right. Look at your right. This one is heading northeast. Okay? That looks terrible. There we go. Northeast. So, for your right, as x is going east, which is positive, it is going north, which is positive. X-intercept, you could tell some of these. I can tell this one, but I don't know the other two. Okay? So we'll come back to that. Y-intercept. If it is in standard form, it will always be your constant. So your y-intercept is 0, 60. Take a look at your graph. See how it matches up? Your extrema, there's two kinds. There's your absolute, and there's your relative. Okay? So they don't have it all. Some have part of it, some doesn't have the other. So just be careful. All right, absolute max. Let's take a look. How high is this graph right here? It's heading all the way to positive infinity. Let's look at your minimum. How low is this graph? Negative infinity. That's as low as it's going to go. All right. Now let's take a look at your relative. Your relative will be this point and this point right here. This is your relative minimum. This is your relative maximum. Sometimes you might have more than one. And that's okay. That one requires a calculator, so I will come back to that one. Okay? As well as your interval increasing and interval decreasing. So you are able to fill out half of this information without using a calculator, just based on the graph I've given you. Now let's go back and finish filling everything else in. You will need a calculator. Okay? All right. Here we go. I'm going to turn off my stat plot because I don't need it anymore, and I don't want that data to go in there. So. Y equal, clear, type this in, X raised to the fifth, right click, minus 4X raised to the fourth, right click, plus 2X raised to the third, right click, minus 8X squared, minus 15X plus 60. Okay, there you go. All right, I'm going to hit graph. Notice, this graph looks nothing like the one I have. So in order for you to make it look like this, use this graph to help you. Go to your window. What is your lowest maximum? X value, negative 8. What's your highest? 8. Your scale, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice they went 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as well. Your Y minimum, what is your lowest? Negative 100. Your highest, 100. And your scale, look, they're going by 20, so I'm going to change mine to 20. Okay, that means it's processing. Now do you see how you can see the graph now? All right, so let's go find some things that we need to go find. Let me see. I need to go find my x-intercept. I need to go find my interval increasing, decreasing, and my relative. So those are things I need to go find, okay? All right, here we go. To find your x-intercept, basically you're trying to find where it's crossing all the x-axis. Here's one way you can do it. If you hit second table, your y is going to be 0. Look at that. 4, 0. You see it? And then you got this one and this one. But notice, there's no other zeros in my y, so you can't do it like that. You're going to have to go do it another way. If you'll hit second calculate, zeros is the same as your x-intercept, okay? So if you need to make yourself a note, zeros is the same as your x-intercept. I'm going to hit 2. I'm going to pick that point right there. Notice it says left boundary. You want to be to the left of it. Right click down. I want to be to the right of it. See that point I'm trying to find? I'm to the right of it. Hit enter. And it says guess. Well, yeah, guess. I want to know. 
So where is it crossing the y, the x-axis? 1.732 comma 0. Three decimal places. Do not forget that part. Okay? All right. Now I want to find this one also. Do the same thing. Zero. Use your left and right arrow button, please, not the up and down, because you're moving along the x-axis, okay? To the left of it, enter. I'm looking for that point. To the right of that point, enter. Guess. And what's that point? Negative 1.732 comma zero. And there you have your x-intercept, okay? All right. What's the other one we need to find? Oh, we need to find a relative minimum and a relative maximum. I'm trying to find this one right here. My advice to you is to label those points, okay? Go hit second. That was a maximum. This one right here is a maximum, so I'm going to hit four. It's a relative maximum. Since I'm wanting this point, I need to be to the left of it, which I am right now. And then you want to scroll to the right and be on the right side of that curve and hit enter. It's looking for a change, okay? That's what your calculator is doing. So what is your maximum? Negative 0 0.580 comma 65.100, okay? Let me label my point. Negative 0 0.580 comma 65.1. Okay, I'm just going to write point one. Uh, notice how I label. Let's go ahead and find our minimum. Second count, minimum is number three. Same thing. I need to be to the left of that point, anywhere to the left. Scroll over until you're to the right of the curve. Okay. And yeah, give me my minimum. What's my minimum? 3.225 comma. That looks like negative 80, right? Yep. Negative 80. Let's move this over if you can't see it. Oops. Hmm. I can't see it. Let me change my window real quick because I want to be able to see it. Let's do negative 120. Okay. All right. I couldn't tell if that was 86 or 85, so I want to be on the safe side. Okay. Do it again. Second count. And I'm going to try and find my minimum. Enter. Okay. Now I can be seeing better. Negative 88.330. That's what I wanted to be sure of. All right. So this point right here is 3.225 comma negative 88.330. All right. Now, interval increasing. Where do you see increasing? This is always your x value, okay? What do you see an increase? I see it from here up to here. Where is it starting from? Negative infinity, and it stops at negative 0 0.580. Always your x value. I see another increase right here. See it? Where does it start? At 3.225. Continues on forever, continues all the way to the right, forever and ever, positive infinity, okay? Interval decreasing, I see one decrease right here. That is the only decrease I see. So what is that decreasing? Negative 0 0.580, stopping at 3.225. And there you have your decreasing, all right? Here's your solution in case you need to take a quick picture. Okay. Good luck. You guys will do great. I will post the other two videos as soon as I have them. And uh, you guys have a great night. Bye.